Hello. Well, it's very nice to be here, uh, but it would be even nicer to be here face to face uh, because we're talking, of course, about the most intimate uh, face to face relationship of all, which is the relationship within the family. Uh, and I think for most people, though obviously not for everybody, uh, the family is the basic fundamental uh, source of security in, in our lives. Uh, in our group, research group at LSE, we've been studying all the factors that affect uh, a person's well-being. Uh, and we find that being in a partnership, uh, a living partnership, uh, is one of the most important factors, more important, for example, uh, than whether you are rich or poor. Uh, but the tragedy is that uh, at this moment um, in the modern world, uh, the family is often a rather unstable and insecure uh, institution. And so what I want to talk about is three practical ways in which we could increase the stability of families and reduce uh, the level of family conflict because family conflict is is a central source of misery for people of course if the conflict is bad enough uh, it probably is best to separate and there's evidence that uh, children benefit uh, if the uh, conflict is bad enough from a separation um, but the main thing of course we want to do is to prevent conflict in the first place so here are three practical things which we could do now in our society to reduce family conflict. The first is to offer therapy to parents uh, who are in conflict. There are now very good evidence-based therapies uh, such as CBT adapted for couples uh, which can make people a great deal more satisfied uh, with their relationships. For example, that therapy uh, where everybody who enters is dissatisfied with the relationship. Uh, six months after the end of the therapy, 50% of people are completely satisfied with the relationship. This sort of thing should be offered um, in the NHS as a, a, a regular uh, offering. It is recommended by NICE, um, but it's only a very few hundred therapists employed by the NHS. It should be thousands. It just requires a minister uh, or Simon Stevens to decide to go for it. Let's go for that. So that's number one, uh, therapy for couples in conflict. Second, of course, is that many of the problems between couples arise because of the uh, problems that one or both of them have with the children. So it's conduct disorder in the child uh, <coughs> that is bringing uh, strife into the family. And here again, we've got very good evidence-based therapies. Uh, by far the most widely uh, adopted is the so-called Incredible Years program. This is a program for training parents in how to uh, produce uh, good relationships with children with whom they are in conflict. Uh, it's a group training, um, something like 12 sessions, 12 to our sessions. Um, these have been followed up, the children of these couples have been followed up for 10 years. <coughs> um, when there were children, um, were originally seven, say, they're followed up to 17, and it's been remarkable. <coughs> they found that 80% fewer of those children who were treated um, had severe conduct disorder compared with the control group. So again, this should be, and it could easily be made more widely available, because uh, Stephen Scott, um, who did the trial I just mentioned at the Institute of Psychiatry. In the late um, labour period, he was able to train uh, something like 4,000 so-called parenting practitioners. Uh, and they were employed, but in the period of austerity, uh, they became disemployed. Uh, many of them are still around. And uh, as you know, uh, the government is rolling out um, a... Uh, a, a, a system uh, of mental health support teams in schools, they ought to have, and don't at the moment, have these uh, uh, parent training workers in them. Um, they could easily be done. It just requires, that, again, a decision to provide the money to employ them. And then the third thing, of course, is that prevention is better than cure. And uh, we've got a, a wonderful opportunity uh, when people first come um, 
for antenatal classes. Um, they're very open-minded. Uh, they want to learn, not just about um, the physical side of childbirth, but how to bring up the children. And we'd like them to also uh, know that uh, bringing a child into a family uh, creates a new dynamic between the parents. Uh, and this is something which, again, um, people can be uh, acquire a skill uh, in handling. There are some very good programmes here again. Uh, one is called Family Foundations. It's four meetings uh, in groups of parents before the childbirth and four meetings after. And that has been found three years later to produce happier family relationships and better behaved children. So we know a lot. We now know a lot about how to uh, reduce family conflict and strengthen the family. Uh, but we've got to take it as a straightforward decision. Uh, if you go back 150 years, uh, the state did nothing about education. It decided that it should do something about education, help people to become good workers um, and good citizens. And I think it's now the time to say that the state has got to offer help to anybody uh, who wants help to be a good parent uh, or a good partner. It's time to do it. Thank you so much. Good luck with your conference.